Hi. Do you know the feeling when you would want to just lay down on the couch and have some snacks and watch a movie, but you have no place to put your drink or snacks onto? Well, I do. But on this video, I will try to solve that issue. So I will be building two side tables with one having dual functionality, but we will get to that later. I started by rough cutting all my ports to size before moving on to the jointer to run the ports through that before turning the jointer into a planer. After all the ports were planed, it was time to trim the final edge on the table saw. Now, with all the ports milled down, it was time to do some glue ups. Luckily, on this project, there was only two needed. On the first glue up, I made two separate panels. I like to alternate the crane pattern to counter for seasonal movement to have more flat panels. And the second thing, to have more flat panels out of the glue up, I like to mark all the joints with I's and O's and then run the boards one final time through the jointer. I's facing inside the fence and O's outside. This is to counter that if my tables are played or the fence on the jointer isn't exactly at 90 degrees, the edges on the joints will complement each other. Before adding the last clamps and tightening everything up, I also have picked up a habit of using a mallet and a scrap piece of wood to hit the boards to try even out the boards to sit flush to each other. Once the first glue up was ready, it was time to hand plane the panels flat as my planer is only 24 cm or 10 inches wide. But luckily there wasn't too much to be planed as my panel making skills have started to develop as well. Once all three panels were ready, I started to cut them to size on the table saw for the first table. Then on the next day I started to make the joinery for the build and like on many of the previous projects on this one as well I will be using dowels. So I started drilling the holes with a doweling jig to the ends and edges of the pieces before moving on to make the corresponding holes. Then I realized that I had messed up. As I had forgotten during the night how I was supposed to assemble the table, I realized that I had drilled the holes to the wrong edges and faces as the hole should have been on the other way around so now I needed to plug all the holes and then do them again. Then, to mark down the dowel locations on the top and bottom, I used marking pins that I put into the existing dowel holes and then laid the top and bottom on top of the vertical piece and drilled the holes based on the pin markings. And, just like on the earlier doweling exercise, I let the top overhang facing the wrong direction as well as the bottom, so I had to do this one again as well. So, it might be a good idea to recheck where the joinery is going if you are going to have a break in between planning and actually doing it. On the bottom there's also an overhang of a couple of centimeters on the other side to avoid tipping to the other direction and I cut the bottom slightly longer to be able to do this. To attach the shelves on the vertical piece I first attach them on their place with clamps, mark down the location with a pencil, then mark the location for the dowels again with marking pins without any mistakes on this one. Now that all the joinery was ready on the first side table, it was time to cut the pieces for the second one. This one will be just a simple C-shaped table with a narrow top and bottom for it to be able to fit in between the couch and the wall. But the table will be having another purpose as well as it will be sized so it can fit on top of the footstool that we have to act as a tray on top of that. On this one I just went with miter joints that I will be reinforcing with dowels. After all the pieces were cut and ready 
it was time to do some sanding before the assembly. If you've made it this far, I think this is a good spot to remind you that if you are enjoying the video, remember to leave it a like and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. Like I just mentioned, I enforced the miter joints with dowels using the doweling jig as we will be lifting the table mostly from the top so to avoid it from breaking I thought this might be a good idea. But I think the miter joint on its own as the piece is quite wide would have been strong enough. But this also adds a nice decorative touch to it. After that, the only thing left was finishing the project. On this, like with the TV stand build, to have them match, I used Rubio Mano Coat in the color of bourbon. After the pieces had a couple of days to try, the project was done. This was a nice, smaller and quicker project to do. It took me two days from start to finish on these, which was really nice, and I really liked the multifunctionality on the other table. And, most importantly, now I have a place to put my drink and snacks while laying on the couch. If you made it this far on the video, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.